we're going to get into question two in our injury 110 uh, practice exam, which is prosthetic hips aren't all they're cracked up to be. So I'm thinking of investing in a new biotech uh, startup company, producing prosthetic hips which is able, so that should be able to withstand the force of a fall without fracturing. Impact force from a tall fall is typically 18 kilonewtons. This new company claims that their prosthetic hips can withstand up to uh, an impact force of 60 kilonewtons on average. They claim that the impact force of fracture is normally distributed with a mean of 60 kilonewtons and a standard deviation of 5 kilonewtons. Newtons. As a potential, potential investor, I'm dubious about these claims. I asked somebody to send me 700 samples. So, 700 samples. I test the impact force uh, to failure for all 700 samples. I'm very thorough. So, I find 670 samples. Okay, so here we go. Impact force. Force in kilonewtons. We have our observed and expected. So, what type of problem is this? We you're going to already see coming. So we said uh, it is going to be our chi-squared test, just like we mentioned in the last at the end of the last video. So between 50 and 50.1 and 75 kilonewtons, I find 670 samples observed. 670 between 50 50.1 and 75. I also find 690 less than so less 75. I also find 660 samples greater than so greater than 53.5, so 660, and then let's go down a little bit further. Between uh, greater than 67 samples between 50.1 and 53.5. And then I find 51 samples, ignore the logic in this next point, 51 samples less than 55, than 30, than 53.5. So 51 samples less than 53.5. And then finally, 650 samples. Again, ignore that, uh, uh, this kind of, you, you might recognize something there, but it's intentionally done. 650 samples between 53.5 and 75 kilonewtons. Does the sample truly come from a normally distributed population at a 95% confidence interval? So our alpha equals 0.05. We know that for chi squared, um, we are going to do the following procedure. So one H naught, we are going to assume what? Normally distributed. Or frequencies are the same. Distributed. Turn of hypothesis, not normal distributed. We know our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We're going to calculate our chi-squared experimental. And we need to figure out and calculate our chi-squared alpha nu, not alpha over 2, because chi-squared right tail test. So what is our nu here? So nu equals k minus 1 minus r. What is this question asking? Normal distribution. So fitting parameter, we have mu and sigma in our normal distribution. So r is equal to 2. So our nu is equal to k, so minus 1, minus 2. What are our possible number of outcomes? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have k is equal to 6. So 6 minus 2 minus 3. So what's the chi-squared of 0 0.05 and 3? Let's go to lecture 4 presentation. Chi-squared 05, 3, so 7.851. So we're going to go ahead back and write that expression right here. So our chi-squared experimental, is, or chi-squared theoretical is just going to be this, 7.851, 7.815, excuse me, right here. So we need to figure out and calculate our chi-squared experimental. So we need to figure out the expected outcomes. So now we're looking at a normal distribution, so we need to uh, go ahead and draw some values and calculate some z values as well. So the first is between 50, uh, 50.1 and 75. So R, let's go ahead and let's do a new sheet here. Actually, let's, let's try to do this at the top here. Um, actually, I'm going to do this here. 
I'm going to open up a sketch pad. I'm going to instead, can't do that. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and actually, let's draw this out. So it should have a mean of 60. So it's our probability distribution. So it should have a mean of 60. I'm going to do that actually. So mean of 60. So at 60, we should be at z equals to 0. And so now we want to figure out, OK, with this distribution here, what are the number points between 50.1 and 75? So 50.1, 75. So I'm going to need to calculate basically a z value of, what is the z at 75? Right here. Exactly. So. What is the z, excuse me, z of 75? That is just going to be equal to what? Our x, which is 75, minus 60 divided by 5. So that value is going to be, I'll calculate that right here. We can actually just do that. That is going to be a value of 3. So my z of 75 is a value of 3. So we can put that right there. What about the z of 50.1? So Z of 51 is going to be equal to 50.1 minus 60. That is going to be divided by 5. So that's going to be approximately minus 1.98. Um, so we can go ahead and start to kind of tabulate some of these values. So let's go ahead and let's write these down. So Z of 75 is equal to 75 minus 60 divided by 5. My z of 50.1 or by 1 is equal to 50.1 minus 60 divided by 5. My z of, I'm just going to go through the next ones. So 75, we've already calculated that value, 53.5. Let's do that. Equals 53.5 minus 60 divided by 5. There's that z value there. And then we're going to get our values. 53.5, 50.1. I think that's pretty much it with the 67 samples. Uh, less, greater than 53.5, 50.0, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that should be it. Um, we should be good to go now with those values. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate this out um, and figure out this uh, problem. So let's just double check. Yeah, that's about it. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the areas. So what is the area of Z75? Well, we need to go back. So that is a value of 3. Let's go back to lecture 3 here. Let's go to our, actually, let's go to lecture 2 with our Z tables. So an area of 3 is 0.4987. So let's go ahead and write that one out. So 0 0.4987. I know my area of 50.1 is 1.98, so that is going to be equal to 1. Point, let's just double check that that's the 8. So, one point, ooh, so equal to 0.4761. Got that. Excuse me. We have an area of 53.5, 53.5, and that's going to be equal to. Let's name these correctly. 3.5, that's going to be minus 1.3, so that's just going to be 0 0.4302, 0 0.4032. All right, so we have these values, so now let's figure out and let's go back to our sketch and let's finish up this problem. So, first question asks, what's the expected value between 50.1 and 75? So I know, I'm going to move this over here, area between 50.1 and 75, so this is the area from 0 to Z, here, 0.4761, between here and here, 75. So I'm going to add those together. So my first E1 is going to be equal to AZ75 plus AZ501. I'm going to multiply that already right now by my total. So let's define that. How many number samples did we have initially? Let's go back and check. It's 700. So I'm going to multiply that by total equals 700. So E1 times 700 is going to give me this value right here. So that's my first expected value. So we can just plug that in here, but 
I'm going to actually go ahead and look at my observed uh, and just go ahead and do that right now. So let's go ahead and so 670, 690, 660, 67, 51, 650. Now we'll get our expected equals E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off and do this tabulation. So what is the value less than 75? So this is the Z value of three. So this gives me the value, this Z75, that area is between here and here. That area is 0.4987. So everything less than 75 is going to be what? Well, it's going to be my area of Z75 plus 0 0.5. Let me multiply this by, again, my total. 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 All right. That looks pretty good. What about my area of three? Let's go ahead. That was a doorbell. <laughs> COVID. It's so interesting. Uh, so 53.5. We did have not put that marker up there yet. So let's actually write that in here. So this is 53.5. So I want the area, everything greater than 53.5. So I need the area from here to here, which is that area of Z53.5. Uh, Z and then I need to add everything. So it's everything greater than that. So I need to add plus 5. So add the 0 0.5. That's why I'm going to total. And I've got 632. What about my next area? So everything between 50.1 and 53.5. So we are looking for this area right here. That you can see on the screen. So if I'm looking for this area, I need to take this Z value. So the area from 50 to 51, and I need to subtract the area from zero to this Z. So I'm going to just do that. So I need the area of Z501 minus the area of Z535 times my total. That's going to be my E4. My E5 is going to be, let's look at what we're asking for, less, everything less than 53.5. So all I'm going to do is take 0 0.5 minus this area right here. So 0 0.5 minus the area Z535. Again, that's going to give me everything less than, than here because we know from 0 to minus infinity, this total area is 0 0.5. We already know the area here that's given by our z value, so you're subtracting everything less than that. So then I need to multiply that by total. And finally, E6 is going to be everything between 53.5 and 75. So all I'm doing there is adding that. A area of Z535 plus the area of Z75. That's it. Multiply by total. Those are my expected values. So these are my observed, these are my expected. The question now asks us if it's normally distributed, so let's get our chi-square experimental. So that's just gonna be my table of my observed minus my expected, that value, excuse me. That's, oh, that's too many brackets. Squared, and then we're gonna do that, divided by experimental. Go ahead and double check, get that there. Observed by expect, expected, oh, excuse me, over expected squared, or no, no over expected squared. Observed by expected squared divided by the expected. We're gonna do that from I from one to length of my observed. And we have, those are the values for each of those. We have to do the sum. And this is gonna be my chi-squared experimental is 11.2564. Uh, so chi-squared experimental, 11.2564. So once we have that, let's go ahead. We know it's a right tail test. So where does it fall? So on that curve, we know that this value here is my 7.815. Now I fall to the right of that. This is my chi square experimental. This is the reject. So we reject H naught. So it is not normally distributed. So that's it. That's our, uh, this is our reject region. That is problem two. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions. And next time we're going to go on to problem three, which is uh, basically measuring pressure in cylindrical pressure vessels. So that's going to be a fun uh, problem coming up soon. So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and we'll get into it next time. Thanks. Bye.